Hi everyone and welcome to today's episode of the Elephant in the Room uh, podcast. My name is Jonathan Ogutu and I will be your host. In this podcast we'll be speaking about uh, money matters and uh, topics that people find uncomfortable and awkward. I'm joined by my guests uh, Christine and Sally. So Christine, you can tell us a bit about uh, yourself. Um, as you said, my name is Christine, Christine um, Mudoni, um, founder of Alpha Car Giants Limited and the co-founder of Elite Women Kenya. Thank you. Raja. Sally? Hi everyone, my name is Sally Mosaru. I'm also the co-founder of Elite Women KE, a marketing profession where I run a marketing agency where we do um, design all through to branding. So to start us off, we're going to discuss about the middle income uh, crisis. If you look at articles on the newspaper and you look at uh, the various reports from, say, the World Bank or other uh, organizations, you see that they rank Kenya as a lower middle income uh, economy. Right? This brings in uh, the question, where do you draw the line of who's in middle income and what are some of the challenges uh, that they face in terms of being in that uh, level. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Christine, if you can tell us a bit about uh, the middle income and some of the challenges uh, you think that uh, the middle income uh, face. Okay. Um, I'll start us off by just getting into the definition of what middle class is. And middle class is a group between the upper and the lower classes um, with a moderate income, education, occupational status as well. Um, these are probably people who could afford a lifestyle. Uh, they have access to essential services, and there are some financial. They have some financial stability, and in this case, I believe this is someone who could comfortably afford a holiday or two. This is someone who already owns a home or uh, can comfortably sustain a mortgage, and this is someone who, if they, it's a household that has children, they have their children in a comfortable private school that um, suits their income. So I feel. On a personal level, that is what describes um, the middle class people that we have. Yes. Interesting. Mm. Sally? Um, I concur with everything Christine has said. Uh, just to answer your question, if actually this country has uh, the middle class um, sector of people, I think we used to. Right now, I think we are shrinking yeah. um, the middle class category of people. We used, I think, before COVID, they mm. were middle class. But after COVID, I think the middle class uh, segment has shrinked, mainly because we have reduced um, wages or reduced um, salary brackets. Um, after COVID, there was a lot of redundancy in companies. People were laid off. Uh, guys were forced to get into business. And um, even if you are retained at work, you are working for three departments and earning your same salary. So there's reduced um, salary brackets or income and we also have um, increase in uh, consumption or consumable goods that a normal household should ideally have so um, I think the middle class is shrinking because of those factors that I've mentioned unless I've missed anything so that's my idea of where we are at as middle class interesting that's very interesting I underline two things that uh, both Christine and Sally have said so when you're speaking about uh, lifestyle, inflation, there's the pressure that comes that I'd like to live in a certain uh, lifestyle. Mm -hmm. There's some uh, pressure in terms of how I can maintain that uh, lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It could be aspects of debt and some other financial stuff. So what are your thoughts with regards to the uh, lifestyle inflation that comes in um, after our discussion on the, the middle class. So first of all, Christine has mentioned that um, to be in a, some sort of class or to survive in this um, country, you need basic things, food, education, housing, medical. Yeah. So uh, based on your lifestyle, are you able to comfortably afford that? Then what is coming over and above that as um, lifestyle inflation that you have mentioned? I was watching the other day, um, I think something on TikTok, and um, there was a lady who was really going home on a restaurant. 
these hidden gems i think we've all heard of them yeah, yeah. because of the pressures of going to this particular hidden gem mm-hmm. posting this type of lifestyle to the gram that you're living you get there whatever you are promised on socials is not what you're paying for you pay 5000 for a meal that genuinely could go for an easy 1000 shillings right but because of this pressure that we are trying to sustain ourselves on social media bring this facade of a lifestyle that you're living or keeping up with people that you don't even know in real sense if they're actually living that life i think that's my interpretation of the inflation and pressures of lifestyle that people are trying to um to manage or um giving themselves the pressures to be in those type of spaces so for me basic food healthcare education housing you have that then now anything over and above i would from my end where i'm sitting i would go into the investment way to avoid debt mm-hmm. anything that you are spending out of your comfort zone right now in this economy is un- unnecessary and it's us being in denial i know we are preaching the lulu but <laughs> let us yeah let us come down and just be sustainable and come back to reality where you are look at where you are at in life and um focus on your basic needs yeah interesting yes <laughs> I'd like to hear what kristin has to say about this. Oh, yeah i mean um <coughs> i really interact with the the so called middle class a lot at my workspace and uh, in the sense of when we are selling cars at um our company uh we do interact with people who want to buy the cars that are above their means and we've had cases where someone will come in with as much as 500,000 and they start in a car that is worth a million or over a million and you clearly know that you'd have to recommend them to a financial institute rather a financial facility for them to get the top up for the said um amount so in this case we get to a space where you want to uh you want to advise but you want to sell <laughs> and of course as a sales person and as a business woman i will of course sell and um the best thing that we normally do in the case of such pressures we recommend it to a financial facility so that you are able to select the one that you're comfortable with yeah. so mind you when you're approaching a financial facility there are different um aspects of this financial facilities we have banks we have uh shylocks we have work uh, companies that give um car loans and we have uh I don't want to mention their names. <laughs> <laughs> But we have these financial institutions that have cropped up of late and they are giving uh these facilities. So there are people who will still go ahead and go for one that is not uh advisable for their income in one case or another and we do have the ones who want to rush into um the ones that we call Shylocks. So you put yourself in debt and you we're doing all this only to show up in this lifestyle that is called um so called middle class and you no longer can sustain uh as Sally mentioned there are people who are in um, the space of uh rather they've been let go from their work or maybe they changed jobs for one reason or another or they had to actually downsize from what it is that they were getting so uh if you know very well that your income cannot sustain a certain um a lifestyle you need to live below your means do not live in the space of this um facade of or oh, a middle class and in real sense you can just sustain the same um lifestyle but at a lower um expense so we do look into stuff rather personally what i look into is the abc's of what is important in your life um and that is the a the most important essentials that you cannot live with as you mentioned education um this is um medical and then we have housing and of course food yeah, yeah food so the main things that are the most important things that you can't live without fine categorize them as a b essentials are the ones that are hair dressers you i mean come on <laughs> <laughs> we can decide to change our hair dressers if you know the one that you currently have is charging you way above the or if you could live without them mm-hmm. it's fine those are 
they are then they are essentials but they are not that important mm-hmm. and they are people we can decide to cut off from our expenses and um other good examples is as she mentioned this <laughs> hidden gems mm. you could decide to go to h- other hidden gems that are within your means and we have uh, c essentials are things like takeout you can cut off on k- takeout you could decide to do uh, to leave your car once in a while you don't need to drive to work every day so save on fuel save um the 1000 2000 3000 shillings that you had to top up for fuel so those are the kind of things that i feel are very essential when it comes to succumbing to this pressure of being or sustaining the middle class as you mm-hmm. look into the pressures that are involved as well yes interesting mm-hmm. that's very uh, comprehensive at least to myself i have to do it with the hairdresser and it's just <laughs> clean Keep shave <laughs> clean shave and i'm good no shave november drop the year <laughs> exactly so sally um i think there's a very interesting topic that christine has uh, mentioned about debt is debt bad hmm. not entirely yeah it depends what you're borrowing this amount of money for if you're borrowing this money to sustain a lifestyle that is not real then that is bad debt if you are borrowing money to invest so that you get returns to be able to service this loan or uh, be able to cater to your interests um that is that is acceptable loan yeah um right now it depends also with where you're taking the loan from because um i know banks are untouchable right now the interest rates are crazy um not that i'm saying don't go there i don't want to be held liable <laughs> by any bank but um it's it's really crazy to be taking uh, loans in this economy the interest rates are crazy as much as they'll tell you your repayment period is extended to this much we often underestimate the effect of long term repayment period because of the interest that accumulates over time you might take a loan uh, worth 500 the value of 500k right now spend it within um, you know a split second but your repayment period by the time you calculate the interest and the period as much as it's extended for 5 years mm-hmm. you're paying back 2 million 2 million at the time oh, wow. with the increase of the inflation right now it's probably not going to be as much value but at the end of the day you've en- ended up you know accumulating so much interest so okay. it depends also with where you're getting the loan from i i've had conversations where people are um advising um not shylocks but they are sacos yes, i think there are options of sacos there are chamas for women you know as elite women i know there are elite chamas out here that people um help each other you know facilitate this emergency expenses and things like that and yeah so i don't think debt is bad it's just that how you need to take a smart debt because you're not just taking a debt so that you buy a range rover so that i pull up for no reason then cash i don't have my foot or i don't have um fees for my child doesn't make sense at all but please if you want to purchase a car alpha car giants i'll sell it actually cuz get you yes oh, that's nice yeah so i know there's someone who's listening uh, on this topic and they actually asking themselves that okay i'm already in this situation i have debt i'm living a lifestyle that i don't know how i'm going to manage so the question is how can i get out of that situation so i'll turn on to christine I'm already in that situation. <laughs> but I want to get out of it. Yeah. What are some of the um opinions from your end on how I can be able to manage that? If you are in employment, uh, per se, you should look for a supplement a source of income so that you are able to service or even pay up your your debt. In this case, if you're already in debt, that means whatever income you're getting cannot sustain whatever you are paying to the debtor. Um if you're able to involve yourself in um in activities that can generate extra income per se you something that you love doing there are people who can bake they can get into baking or if for instance you are passionate about something that can um generate something extra on the side get into it and capitalize on that and use the extra income to sort your debt um there are other channels of settling <laughs> debt that i would not want to mention okay. because i feel like it will get you more into debt you know there are people who say oh i'll take another uh, loan or another 
uh, advanced to just cater to this and then continue paying this, but it will not be advisable. There are other channels that I feel are very good. Um, just decide what it is that is in your house that you do not need. It could be that car. It's okay. Sell that car. Maybe the extra money that is left after you sell your car, you can just uh, buy something that is within the range that is remaining. Um, there are people who end up selling stuff that they do not need. There are people, even for us women, we declutter time to time. Sometimes we find our wardrobes with over <laughs> over 100 outfits that we do not need. As a woman, if you feel like there are clothes you've not worn for a certain period of time, I feel like you could just do a small sale to just get something small that can help you offset a few chama loans here and there. Mm. Because sometimes we talk of debt and people think banks, they think of um, this company, these circles, or maybe the company loans. It can be a simple thing as what you owe your chama. It could be a simple thing as your insurance loan mm. or your small, uh, what, MCOPA, right? No. Yeah. <laughs> just those small phone loans that most women might have and the reason why I'm leaning towards the women side is because they are the highest debtors, right? True. And they are the ones who carry the highest debt in Kenya as we speak. So I stand corrected. Anyone who feels mm -hmm. so they would want to correct that data, it's fine. But I feel like they need to know the basic things that are most important and then whatever it is that you do not need, can you turn it into money? Then fine. Try and use that to offset your that interesting mm -hmm. sally how do i get out of it other than of course doing your budgets like what she said whatever is needed um you can get financial um literacy try and um maybe this will not help you settle your debt right now but it will help you not get into more debt so get your financial literacy get to know um, what works or what um, investments that you can get into that would help you generate more. Things like, there's a lot of talk about money markets. Um, those are better avenues on, of investing compared to personal experience. I'll talk about Forex. I don't know how people are working that, um, you know, that sector, but um, just try and get financial literacy. So at least now, if you're going to speak about the next, is with regards to now s social media and technically the people we see are online. I'd like to hear your thoughts on how they influence our financial uh, relationships or actually our financial uh, decisions and our expenditures. And so much comes t to mind when we touch on social media because I feel that is the highest influence and where we get this pressure to sustain our lifestyles because you want to post the next big thing that you're doing or the next big thing that you are venturing into or the next big thing that you're spending money on and in real sense you may not have have, have that um, that specific amount to use on whatever it is that you are. And this goes back to just because everyone is flying to Diani or the coast or Mombasa every December doesn't mean you have to do the same thing. Just because everyone is posting that picture of them in a plane, <laughs> it doesn't mean you have to fly in one. I mean, there are many ways to get to Diani if you really have to, <laughs> mm -hmm. and there are cheaper ways. So people are coming to this uh, social media influence and pressure it doesn't make sense sometimes because you are not who that person is you do not know what it is that they're doing for them to get to that spot that they're in maybe their life is actually going really well as it is and as they are showing it and they are making whatever it is that they are able to make to sustain that lifestyle and here you are probably going through this um maybe for lack of better words, demotion, or you're struggling at work, you've not been paid for two, three months, and you want to sustain this facade of, hey, I can fly to Diane, I can do this. So don't have to actually do what it is that everyone is doing, and you don't have to be in a space where you feel less, um, I don't know how to put it, because there are times maybe it affects maybe people's uh, self-esteem, and you want to assure yourself that you got it or you can manage to do it when you're doing whatever it is that everyone else is doing. So it's never that serious. <laughs> it's Very never good. that serious. Ah, nice. Yes. Sally. Um, 
Christine has said that maybe these people are living, actually earning this money and can afford this lifestyle. Mm. I also want to tell you that these kind of people on social media who, it's all lies, they're posting something, probably it's even someone else's food, but they'll post it so that you think that it's them. Probably they were in Diani last year, but they're posting the photo now so that you think <laughs> it's happening right now. So okay. let's not succumb to that pressure of social media. Social media should be a space. And then social media, most of the time, you'd find people showing you their happy life. Life is a balance of both good and bad. They will not show you the struggles that they're going through. Yeah. So right. if it's your phase and it's your, uh, your period of probably your downtime, embrace it and um, do not succumb to this pressure to become something you're not. Be real with yourself, be true with yourself, and that's the only way you'll be contented. Yeah, comparison is the thief of joy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. So don't find the need to live a certain lifestyle that it's not meant for you. From the beginning, from last year, end of last year, I think we had an event um, as elite women. We had a summit and it was themed around vision board. And ever since we've seen quite a number of vision board um, events coming up, especially women are centered. A vision board is a visualization tool that uh, helps you realize what you want to achieve in a certain period of time, be it a month, be it a quarter, be, be it a year. Stick to your plan, stick to your budget, make a budget, make a plan. If I was to fly at the end of the year, there's no need to fly in August. Mm. You had said you're going to go out in December, plan towards that. Don't fall into the pressure because you've seen, oh, Christine was outside in January. I can also afford to be outside in February. Stick to your plan and you will not go wrong. Make mindful decisions on what you spend on without having external pressures get to you. Another thing maybe I'd like to mention is um, have open communication about money. It's good that um, the elephant in the room has created a space where we can discuss money and debt and the crisis of middle class because people don't want, we, we are really in denial, people don't want to face this fact um, and they don't want to have open communications. For example, not just with your friends but with your family and parents and siblings mm -hmm. most of the times we post up and we give this probably f case in point my family is back in the coast i'm in nairobi first of all extended family sadly i may make it a nation nairobi <laughs> <laughs> yeah and managing all this economy um in nairobi then someone or rather your family member would feel inclined to ask you for some sort of favor mostly financial financial favor but because you don't want them to have a different perspective of you and you want to continue uh, holding this regard ukifika ndile anti anti wa nairobi amekuja home december you want everyone to be around you because you want to give this lifestyle idea that you're living in nairobi so you end up borrowing some money even if it's as small as 3000 shillings so that you sort your cousin somewhere yeah. right so yeah. we need to honestly for uh, work through black tax because it's real it's happening our our families back at home rely on us to send the money but if you do not have that money yeah. just tell them mm. imagine they will figure it out or i think we're having this discussion with christine earlier instead of giving them solid cash why not try and invest try and come up with okay then the reason why we are all suffering or everyone needs a, a small 2k 2k here every month why not have a pool where we collect money as small as 300 a month as small as 500 a month everyone so that when anyone needs an emergency fund we get it from the pool that we've already collected as a family and not them relying on you and you're always trying to keep up and send the money so let's have open communication about money with our families and with our friends someone invites you to sankara for brunch sounds nice looks nice on social media but <laughs> if you cannot afford it honey don't go uh, we're, we're just speaking about the community here <laughs> and we have elite um with us so how does elite um help the community um in actually achieving this financial yeah. freedom and education yeah so as a community we are in a space where we are able to bring women together and give them um financial literacy in sense of having an event where we can bring speakers who are versed in this um industry 
and uh, we do have workshops and uh, intend to actually start webinars with uh, Dovu World so that we are able to educate and give more uh, financial literacy to the women and even the women in our community. We need to be in a space where women are making informed decisions because they are the ones who are carrying, for lack of better words, the whole world on their backs. True. And this is why it goes back to why women are the huge debt carriers in our country because in most cases they have to sustain their homes, they have to keep everything running and when maybe for one reason or another they have to succumb to black tax, um, they still have to carry that. And the best thing that we are doing is educating them and making sure they have the right um, financial education so that they're able to make informed decisions. So even to add on to what Sally was saying as in terms of black tax and having um, a pool of fund where each one of the family members can sustain themselves, we go back to making sure women are able to have the mindset or the knowledge to start businesses that can supplement their income or to venture into entrepreneurship and make informed decisions when they are setting up these businesses. These businesses can be anything, even a partial meal at your home or shags, yes, you can start yes. a portion meal, even together as a family and being initiated by that woman who's gotten this um, knowledge from our community, goes back home and decides, okay, I'm done doing black tax. So what is it that we can do? Each one of you to contribute a certain amount of money, let's start a business, let's start this portion meal and have something that is sustaining the family as opposed to her carrying all the debt on her back or even the whole community or the family on her part. We need the women now in this day and age to be able to make decisions like this is the right land for the family. This is, um, you know, we need to, you know, start land banking probably, buy this property, then resell it after the value has gone up. So those are some, um, some education tips that we give our community uh, or give our community access to. And bringing in people who are already proficient in these spaces. So we brought someone in land banking and, and property investment, and we also had uh, Rina Hicks, who gave us a bit of financial literacy, mm -hmm. what to expect uh, in the coming years as a Kenyan economy, what other countries are going through, and uh, some of the investments that we could be making. So just to add on what Christine has said, we create a space or a platform for women to come and learn. Among, among every other thing that we do during the event, mostly is um, having conversations and having candid conversations to yeah. be more specific that would help um, a woman today better tomorrow. So as we uh, conclude, um, it's very important uh, to the individual who's actually well, watching us and asking themselves like, so from where I am now, how do I move? Um, in which direction do I actually move? So do you have some words of encouragement in terms of how to you know, move from where you are in terms of if you're in a financial pressure and how to get yourself um, into, say, a good position in terms of uh, encouragement? Anything, uh, Christine? Um, I feel like um, as a woman and as someone who's seen um, or even carried a whole household to <laughs> where we are. I've been able to go through things that have made me feel the need to equip myself and to be ready. And this is where we go to putting yourself in a space where you join communities that are actually um, hosting and uh, giving this knowledge, uh, looking for financial literacy in spaces that are provided by people who are doing this professionally so that they're able to help you out or just help you through because sometimes you cannot be helped out of a debt mm -hmm. or helped um, into debt. Mm -hmm. So Correct. how can you go through it? So you need someone who is a professional to help you through your debt or even the space that you are in so that you don't get into debt. Mm -hmm. um, we need to equip ourselves with um, the knowledge, the basic knowledge of <coughs> understanding how to invest, how or what is the best saving culture so that you're able to at least save something for an emergency fund, keep some money for maybe medical or even just for these small things that we want to indulge in. Mm -hmm. It's a simple thing as having a budget that can help you through your 
month to month and as much as we want to do everything that is good and nice then always have a budget for each and everything you could budget for entertainment once a month it doesn't have to be every weekend or mm. every other day you're doing something that um takes up your money so you could budget for entertainment you could budget for maybe say I would buy something that is nice once in a month or twice in a month or every other month you could buy something that you want to look good and actually mm -hmm. even share on social media I mean, yeah. Yeah. that's why most people have they have these accounts yeah so a word of encouragement is to equip yourself with the right knowledge um, understand what is investment or what is in food when you want to invest have a good saving culture um, get someone who can help you through the financial part of things in terms of through debt or out of debt um, other than that, live within your means, most of all. Very true. Yes. Yeah. Um, one, I'd say prioritize your 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 goals, what you have set within the year, within the week. With, prioritize that and focus on that. Don't be wooed away or fall into this external pressure. Be very resilient. It's not that serious. Focus on what you have put for yourself or what's important to you open communication about money let's talk about you know being real if you you cannot afford this right now and someone needs it you just have an open communication that it cannot come now and these are the reasons why another thing probably how you pay your daily expenses can also um, probably not lead you into debt but make you spend more than you intend to so uh, if you consolidate your funds in a way that you're probably removing your money from your bank to your M-Pesa, then pay 10, 20 things via M-Pesa. There's that small interest that we do not account for every day. True, true. So you yeah. need to know how you're paying your everyday expenses so that you save no matter how small that six shillings that M-Pesa is taking from you, every yeah. every transaction, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you're probably spending 300 shillings just going somewhere. Yeah. yeah, And that's on a daily. Imagine now accumulated to a monthly expense, two months, three months. By the end of the year, you could have actually paid that money. You would have introduced your interest rates on the loan. Yeah. yeah. Also negotiate your, your interest rates with whoever you're you're borrowing money from your financial institution negotiate your interest rate if they are giving you six seven percent try and negotiate it down to four and also extend your repayment period all right so as you've said in everything we start by budgeting after budgeting we see how much we can uh, save as she has mentioned uh, clearly there are those small expenditures that we don't factor and if you factor them they'll actually uh, build. There's this challenge that I would uh, challenge everyone. There's the aspect and the beauty of what we call compounding. An individual who's saving, who starts with a shilling today, then the next day he saves double that, which is two shillings. The next day he saves four shillings. So he's doubling the amount. If you do that for a full year, you find that you're actually saving a lot of money. Good challenge. Uh, to do in terms of your, finan your financial uh, goals and getting towards financial uh, freedom. All right, it has been interesting having our uh, guests. Uh, Christine, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Sally, thank you very much. It has been a privilege. I mean, um, there's a quote that says that a chicken that hangs around eagles learns how to fly. I believe now we are able to fly away uh, with the information that you've gotten from here. I've been your host, Jonathan Ogutu. Thank you very much. Thank you.